we're going to get these cabbages in the ground then we're going to get these beds interplanted with some direct seeded crops that are quick growing crops and so we kind of get two crops out of the same planting is the goal here okay so it's the middle of august it's like august 17th today i believe it's saturday i called out of the farmer's market because i sold everything i had to restaurants this week i lease a property on the other side of town it takes me about 20 minutes to drive there i lease the garden area which is about an acre maybe a little bit more of actual space that i have access to but the actual gardens is like probably half an acre and i'm heading over there today to plant my fall brassicas so this is my nursery space where i raise all my seedlings I got some broccolis here i got a bunch of brussels sprouts over here we're planting several hundred brussels sprouts broccolis cabbages and then whatever bed space i have left over there is going to get direct seeded to things like watermelon radishes radishes turnips and carrots already got some beets of carrots planted over there and then we have a whole field of winter squash which is about ready to be harvested so today it's like super rainy out it rained all last night it's the middle of august so it's still pretty hot but it's time to get my fall brassicas in the ground now if you want to have any successful harvests for fall and my goal is to get these things harvested before it gets really cold they'll survive some frost but i don't want to be over there like pulling frost blankets off every, over everything in the cold so my goal is to get these plants in the ground get them harvested before the cold kicks in and then possibly get these beds cover cropped we'll see how that goes if i can't get the cover crop in in time then it's just gonna get tarped for the winter i'm running a little bit behind i gotta get going i wish i was over there already but kind of slept in i got the dogs take care of them breakfast made my coffee made so now i gotta get these transplants loaded up into my truck and we're going over to the other farm we're gonna get these things in the ground i'm gonna show you how we roll let's go baby hey what's up everybody i'm chef mikey welcome back to chef's harvest farm if you're new to the channel i'm a former executive chef turned urban farmer yeah so i think that's pretty good that's a lot of hand transplanting that i gotta do today i got some more stuff that i'd like to bring over there i'm just gonna try to do this try not to do too much in a day and kill myself and i'm also working against time i don't want to be transplanting these when it's super hot out today uh, i want to do it when it's nice moist and a little bit cool still i'm just gonna grab a few more last things and then we're gonna head over to the other farm it's about 20 minute drive to get there so i'll see you when you we get there and we're gonna put all these plants in the ground all right, y'all, so I just got over to the lease property. Got my truck backed up here to this part of the garden because I'm going to uh, transplant these beds first. I'm going to do like Brussels sprouts here because they're going to take the longest, right? So it's the furthest away. Everything else is going to grow faster. So Brussels sprouts will take the longest. So I strategically am planting them at this part because they're going to need the least amount of attention, theoretically. We're not going to have to get back to them anytime soon. Uh, everything else is uh, easier to access from the other side so grow all the faster growing stuff on the other end of the garden okay so it is august 17th today which is like prime time for planting my fall brassicas wherever you are in the world could be very different for me like these brussels sprouts are going to take about 100 days so they're probably going to get hit with some frost i'm going to plant some carrots over here my idea with the carrots is that they get harvested before it really gets cold so they don't have to worry about like frost blankets with them or anything uh when they get nipped with those first frosts or so sometimes uh it can hurt the tops pretty good i'm planting napoli carrots today i already planted some bolero boleros take like 90 days and the napolis take less than 60 days theoretically it's august 17th today so theoretically september 17th october 17th you know and they always take a little bit longer but you know hopefully by the end of october i'll have full grown carrots over here and even if they do get hit with a good frost at that point the carrots will still be good to harvest you know so if the tops kind of die down a little it won't be a big deal so that's my goal at this property with these carrots i'm gonna plant carrots at the other property too i'm going big on carrots i can sell carrots for seven dollars a pound so it's a pretty profitable crop for me. I might not be in such a rush to be over here and get this done if it wasn't like super cloudy, rainy, humid. These are ideal transplanting temperatures and environments. So that's why I'm over here today by myself. I got like a thousand transplants. I'm gonna put them all on the ground today. I'm just gonna hustle real hard. We're gonna get this knocked out. I don't waste no time. I do it as fast as possible. It's very physical. I back my truck up right here. I'm gonna do the Brussels sprouts first. I'm gonna do like sections at a time. 
so that if something happens and I have to leave, I'm not in the middle of something, you know? So I've got uh, probably at least two beds worth of Brussels sprouts right here. All the bed prep is pretty much done already. We've done all this far in advance. This whole area has just been tarped all summer because the grower who was here before let all the weeds go to seed. We grew potatoes and onions in this area in the spring, and then we just left it tarped all summer to just work on getting the weeds down. We built the bed several weeks ago, got them all set up for today, put the tarps back over them, and then we came over, pulled the tarp back about two weeks ago set up the irrigation and set up some electric fencing that's to keep out like rabbits and groundhogs there's dogs around here too they do a good job of keeping the deer away okay so i'm gonna get moving fast we gotta hustle we gotta get these in the ground but first i gotta till we've already broad forked these beds so i'm just gonna run my tilther up and down like these first two beds that i'm gonna plan to put brussels sprouts in then i'm gonna rake it smooth so i've got like a decent planting bed that i can easily transplant into this is gonna help me so i don't have big chunks that i'm working around you know um and then i'm gonna come up here back up here and i'm gonna prep my brussels sprouts so i'm gonna only select all the biggest nicest ones if they're small and crappy i don't want them not worth it i'm only going for the biggest ones i got tons of them i got plenty so it's not like i'm worried about having to put every single one of them in the ground i'm going for success i only want to put the best ones in the ground the ones that are going to be successful if they don't look like they're going to be successful i don't want them right it's a waste of my time and energy so i'm going to go for the best ones i'm some of them are a little bit leggy they're flopped over i'm going to pull off the cotyledon leaves and then I'm gonna bury them as deep as possible. So I'm gonna get the bed prepped and then I'm gonna hustle hard to get these prepped. I'll show you how I prep them and then we're gonna get them uh, in the ground and I'll show you how we do that. So come on, let's go, we'll get it done. So I just got these two beds prepped because I'm just gonna do these ones first, right? I don't wanna get too far ahead of myself. I just wanna take care of one task at a time today, basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these prepped and we're gonna get these planted. I'll show you how we get them prepped. All right, y'all, so I've got my little pouch here, right? And it's got my little pruners. And so I always keep this right here. And I'm gonna pull all these out and I'm gonna put them in this, you know? And I'm gonna go for all the nicest, biggest ones first. I'm gonna pull them out. And if they need any trimmed up, sometimes there's two. This one's got a little parsley seed in it, whatever. Um, and I'm gonna just kind of trim off these cotyledon leaves. But if for any reason I don't want these in my hand, you know, then I could just stick them right back in my pouch right here rather than like put them down. Cause then if I walk away and I need them, then I can walk all the way back over here. So I always make sure I put them in my pouch. That way I always have them whenever I need them. So I'm just gonna go through these, clean them up and line them up in here. So I do as much of the work standing up as possible. And I don't have to do this when I'm like crouched out over there. And then all I'm gonna do is go put these right in the ground, right? They're already pulled out of the trays and lined up for me. See like this one's got two in it because the seeds are so small. So sometimes like it's hard to, you just drop two in the cell by accident. So like this one, I just want to cut one of those right off. I just, whichever one looks like the weakest one, that's the one that dies. And then I keep the one, you know, and this way I'm not doing it like crunched over in the field. The, the crunched over part is just real fast, you know? All right, so I got all my seedlings staged over here, my Brussels sprout seedlings. So now I gotta get them over here, but you know, I'm just gonna, I got the fence turned off, so I'm just gonna slide them under the fence so I don't go walk around every time. So you always wanna be thinking about like, how can you accomplish the most with the least amount of effort, right? You don't wanna like take one tray at a time, and carry it all the way around, you know what I mean? I mean, just slide them right under there and just walk around once or not even just climb over, right? And then I forgot like a measuring tape today or any way to measure them. I want two foot spacings. Brussels sprouts get pretty big, you know what I mean? And they need some good airflow or you can get like rot up in there, you know, especially cause it's like the fall. So it'll start raining, be a little bit cooler. Um, so they need good airflow. So I'm gonna do a double row, but I'm gonna stagger them um, around two feet, I think, two feet apart, but I didn't bring a tape measure. So I got some drip lines here and the emitters are like one foot apart, right? So I'm just gonna use that for my measuring device. Uh, I got some scissors. I'll probably just cut off a piece that's two feet long and then I'm just gonna use that to measure. So, you know, you, you can always improvise whatever you can use, you know, always work with what's around you, what you got, you know, got tape measure it's all right figure it out right use whatever you can use just cut a piece of a stick use that to measure your spacings or whatever i'm gonna use these drip lines today 
All right, so I'm just gonna slide my seedlings under here and then uh, I'm gonna show you how we transplant them because they're a little bit leggy, you know? And uh, you wanna make sure you bury them right so you get a nice strong plant that stands up straight because these things get really tall and if you don't plant them correctly then they kind of flop over and then they grow up towards the sun and that's when you get like these crooked stalks that do funky things we want to get a nice upright brussels sprout plant so i'm gonna show you how we do that all right y'all so i cut my piece of drip tape there's drip emitters every foot on this so i cut two feet worth of drip line for my measuring device now i'm gonna put these at a two foot spacing and i'm gonna stagger them two rows on the bed these are about 30 inch wide beds they're not perfect one here and then one here and then on the other side i'd put one there and one there so they're a little bit staggered okay then i'm show you how we bury them so now some of these guys are pretty leggy you see what i mean they're like a little bit floppy over you can see how the stem's skinny right there because uh i think they were under the tree in my nursery space my nursery is just like really full and so i had to put some of these under the tree that shades like half of the nursery and i think that just kind of causes them to get a little bit leggy because they don't get enough sun during the day i want to make sure i bury these right up to here you know and that's just going to give me a much stronger plant that's going to grow more upright otherwise your plant's going to flop over like this it's going to grow out and then up towards the sun and you're going to get a crooked stalk i want to have a nice straight stalk so i'm going to bury this up to here in the soil and that's going to give you a nice healthier transplant so i'm just taking my fingers and i dig a hole and i push it in real good okay just like that and then i'm gonna take this stick it here see so i get a nice upright planting so i'm just gonna scoot down the row with my tray and my measuring device and just put one in i mean i'm just gonna bend over and do it you know i uh i spent a lot of time uh, just stretching like 45 minutes at a time three times a week just stretching condition in my body for this type of work you know so for me it's easiest to just kind of bend over scoot down i mean i get comments from people like oh your poor body like dude i condition myself for this stuff you know what i mean uh you have to if you don't then yeah it's gonna suck for you all right so i just ran the overhead sprinklers for a minute kind of hit these transplants that i've already done i got to do a little bit more cabbage but i'm not really happy with the coverage on my sprinkler setup anyways they're netafim sprinklers is basically the farmer's friend kit but i just buy it from drip depot and i just buy the same parts that i put the kit together myself because it's a lot cheaper when you buy it from drip depot which is the irrigation company i'll leave a link below it's an affiliate link so it gives me 10 percent if you order anything through the links so i appreciate it but i buy all my irrigation supplies from drip depot i'll show you these guys i'm just gonna move this guy over like three beds because it's like spraying over on this part of the garden like by 10 feet so i'm gonna move it 10 feet that way so i get a little bit more coverage uh in the garden and then i'm gonna interseed all these brassicas i'm gonna plant radishes turnips and carrots in between all these things so two rows of radishes two rows of turnips two rows of carrots with the jang cedar and then i'm gonna cover it all with insect net i gotta get moving because i still gotta go back to the farm pick up some arugula and deliver it to a dopo because it was like i was going to take it to the farmer's market but since i called out i got one more restaurant delivery i got to make for today so i got to make it to their restaurant before they open at 5 p.m for their service it's about 11 a.m right now so i'm going to tuck these cabbages into the ground direct seed these beds move that irrigation over a few feet put the insect net on and then we're going to water this stuff in and then i got to get out of here and do my deliveries Okay, so these are just the Netafim sprinklers. I'll leave a link below for them, but they're really easy to set up. So I just got mainline tubing that goes right down the center of the bed. And then these just poke a hole right in there and the tube comes up and these just sit on the stand. So I'll leave a link for everything below. It's the easiest way you can water a garden, guaranteed. Uh, it takes about five minutes to set these things up. Uh, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna, uh, disconnect these right here and then cut them in over there and just move these over a few feet okay so i moved this over several feet now and i'm just gonna cut in right here and then just install that t right here 
Okay, and then I just grabbed this end cap off the other piece and I put the end cap back on here. And this just has like this so I can flush out the dirt in the lines anytime I want. It just kind of screws on screws off and then this just gets installed on the end and then if i ever need to connect something else onto it i can okay and then you see how you can just kind of stick this in the ground and then this just kind of sits right on top of it you move it back and forth to wherever you need it to be so we can adjust it here in a little bit so i gotta get moving now i'm gonna transplant about 100 cabbages into uh, about these two to three beds however many it takes for me to get them and then i'm gonna go and interplant my carrots with the brussels sprouts because those are going to take the longest then i'm going to do some radishes and turnips in between the uh broccolis here and then we're going to get these cabbages in the ground then we're going to get these beds interplanted with some direct seeded crops that are quick growing crops so they're like radishes take 30 days they're going to be done before these brussels sprouts and broccolis even start to fill out so we'll be able to harvest those radishes real quick and then the brussels the brussels sprouts and broccolis will kind of open up and finish their season so we kind of get two crops out of the same planting is the goal here all right, so I just got the cabbages planted. You see how I roll, nice and fast. I'm always doing stuff as fast as possible, right? A hop, skip, and a jump, right down the row. Boom, 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 right? You don't wanna take your time doing this stuff. You wanna get that stuff done ASAP. Okay, so I'm gonna run the irrigation for a minute, see how the uh, distribution of water is. And meanwhile, I'm gonna go get my Jang Cedar all set up so that we can get these uh, interplanted with our direct seeded crops. And we're going to hand water everything, make sure everything's watered in good, put some insect net on, then we got to get out of here. So let's go check it out. So I'm going to plant carrots first, and I'm going to do my carrots in between the Brussels sprouts. I'm doing Napoli carrots because they're a 60-day carrot, so they grow fast. And these Brussels sprouts are going to grow slow, but in terms of a quick-growing crop, 60 days on a carrot is long compared to like radishes right i'm gonna do radishes in between my cabbages over here because the cabbages are good, like more low growing they're gonna fill out faster and so those radishes will be done in 30 days so within 30 days i'll get those out of there before the cabbages fill out brussels sprouts are gonna take a little bit longer plus this bed's a little bit wider so i can fit a couple rows of carrots in there and still give everything room to breathe and i'm gonna do two rows of turnips in between my broccolis gonna do two rows of radishes in between all my cabbages so uh, i'm gonna use the jang cedar and i'll go over all the seed rollers that i'm gonna use and uh i'll tell you how i figure out all that also all right so i'm gonna plant my carrots first and i'm gonna use the y24 seed roller in the jang cedar and i get this information from paperbot.co i just go on their website and they've got all these how to's now that's how i figure out what seed roller works best and that's how i get that information but i don't always use the other information perfectly so i'm using the y24 seed roller uh to plant the carrots but then the spacing on the jang it kind of says it here so 24 number just stands for it's got 24 holes and you can adjust how how far spacing it drops the seeds by the gears so you can change the gear ratio in here and i want to go for a one and a half inch spacing with my carrots so i look on the front of the jang here and it says with the 11 gear in the front and the 11 gear in the back it will give me a one and a half inch spacing so i go in here and it's got different gears so it's got a chain with different size gears just like a bike chain and uh, I already got it set up for it, so it's already got the 11 and the 11, but there's some other size gears you could change out for different spacings uh, on the Jang. So that's how I come up with my spacing for planting carrots. I just like a one and a half inch. You can do smaller or further away. If you do them closer together, you're just gonna get a smaller carrot. If you do them further away, you can get a bigger carrot. I like kind of a bigger carrot. It gives me like a six, seven inch carrot at a one and a half inch spacing. So that's what I'm gonna go with today. I like a little bit extra space for my carrots. Some people do them at one inch for sure. And I have, and I also find they can get bigger. They just take longer. So if you put them closer together, they take longer to get bigger. All right, so I ended up going with one row of carrots in between the Brussels sprouts this time. I just kind of got to thinking how like carrot tops can get pretty tall sometimes and you know those brussels sprouts are also going to need room to grow so i figured i don't want to be greedy i want to give everything enough room to have good airflow and get nice harvests off of everything so i decided to play it a little bit safe 
rather than try to jam too much into a small space. So one row carrot's still gonna give me an additional little crop, you know, maybe like an extra hundred bucks out of the bed, and then I'll get an extra few hundred dollars worth of Brussels sprouts out of the bed, you know? So I'm gonna use the X24 seeder on my turnip. And again, I kind of like a bigger turnip. It's more marketable for me and my clients. So I'm gonna leave my jang set up with the 1111. Like no matter what 24 hole roller you have in it it's going to put it at one and a half inches if you got 11 and 11 that's the way it works right all the 24 holes the only difference is the size of the hole to singulate the seed these are hawker rye turnips popular with the chefs you know they put like a whole turnip i grow like a baby turnip like a radish like a white radish uh the chefs like it they put a turnip on one turnip on a plate you know charge a dollar something like that so I am gonna go ahead and do two rows of turnips on the bed though. They're a smaller crop. The tops don't tend to get so big and the broccoli won't fill out so much either. So I'm gonna try two beds, two rows of turnips in between two rows of broccoli. Okay, so next I'm gonna plant radishes down the middle of my cabbages. And I'm gonna do radishes down the middle of my cabbages because the radishes grow the fastest. Those will be ready to harvest in about 30 days, but then the cabbages also grow the fastest and the lowest growing. So they're gonna fill in first and kind of like wanna smother out the, uh, the radishes quickly. So the goal is to get the radishes growing, get them out of there, make a few bucks off it before the cabbages kind of fill out and then take up the rest of the bed. So for my radishes, I got the F24 roller and I'm gonna leave it at one and a half inch spacing. Again, you can plant radishes super close to each other. I find they take a little bit longer to get to any size and I end up with like a lot of like small ones that really aren't marketable for me. So that's why I choose to go with a little bit wider spacing. So I'm gonna keep it one and a half inch spacing with the F24 roller. And honestly, I find the F24 roller kind of picks up a couple seeds at once and drops them together. So it ends up being uh dropping a little bit more seed than like one every inch and a half actually uh but and then i end up with a nice size radish with that spacing and uh you can definitely fit two rows in between the cabbage so that's what i'm gonna do today and these are the radishes that i'm planting this year it's just a new variety from johnny's uh it says it's really good so that's why i bought it never grown them before but they come out with like a new variety of radish every year. Last year I grew Crunchy King. This is supposed to be better than Crunchy King, so. All right, so I got my hose. I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna hand water everything in. And I'm just gonna make sure everything gets watered in real good right now. I'm gonna set up some hoops with some insect nets over everything. So I don't gotta worry about pests so much over here. Just kind of protect everything. And then we'll set off the overhead irrigation oh, before I leave right now. So I'm going to hand water it in and set it off. It's supposed to rain for the next few days. So I just don't trust it. I'm going to set the overhead irrigation off and depend on the rain because it could just be a sprinkle. You never know these days, right? Get out of here. Go make our restaurant deliveries. All right, y'all, so I got the insect nets all set up. I got the irrigation going off for about an hour right now, and then I got the timer on for 30 minutes. We gotta get out of here, it's like 2 p.m. We've been here all morning, it's a big push. We got all these beds planted. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six empty beds over here. We're gonna come back early next week. We'll probably direct seed those to carrots and I guess some transplant beets. So we'll probably plant carrots and beets over there early next week. And then I've got some beets and carrots already germinated over there. The beets just sprouted and I've got the carrots under a tarp. So I'll show you how we use the tarps to germinate carrots when we get there next week. But for today, I got to get out of here. We're in a rush. I got to get back to the other farm, grab arugula so we can deliver it to a dopo before they open at 5 p.m. But I really need to be there by 4 p.m. So we got to get out of here, go do some delivery. So come on, we'll go do that. Then we'll come back here in a couple days. All right, y'all. So it's the next day and I just came over here, kind of check on everything, get everything watered. Uh, everything's looking great, but, uh, you know, I just wanted to really show you guys, like, how cool this property is, so for anybody who actually watches the video till the end, um, I'm just gonna take two seconds, I'm gonna do, like, a full tour, I wanna get this garden planted and looking nice, and then we're gonna do a whole tour of this property, but, so, it's like an 80-acre homestead, right? And there's extreme mountain biking and dirt biking course right over here. <laughs> 
you see like they got it tarped right there so it doesn't wash away when it rains but i mean this thing goes back up in there these trails go for miles and then back here is a forest school so there's a little schoolhouse back there where's the schoolhouse there's a schoolhouse right there and the kids go to school like back in the forest there's a little lean-to um schoolhouses and stuff back there it's super cute super cool and then this guy just lets me uh basically farm on like this little acre right here this is gonna be i'm gonna turn this in the garden for next year um you know the dirt bike courses are all back here and then this is all my garden that i got right now another garden up there where i got filled with squash right now so I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of the property and what else goes on here. Oh yeah, and over here is all like goats, sheep, there's chickens all up there. Um, it's all like uh, rotational grazing goats and sheep over there. It's pretty cool. So I'll show you guys a few, few clips and then eventually I'm going to do like a whole tour of the property. It's a super cool place and I just want to get the garden looking nice first. But I appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching till the end and I'll see you later.